that um, last June I went to Israel and occasionally I get out some of my photographs just to bore you of the places I've been. But one of the good things about going to Israel, going to the places of the Bible, going to the places where Jesus was, is you really get a feeling of what was happening. There's nothing better than actually, in a sense, touching, being in the places where our Bible stories happened. And um, especially here, and here was between Jerusalem and the River Jordan, where these people would have walked as they went to be baptized by John the Baptist in the background there, you can see. And just being there, being aware of the heat, the barrenness of it all, the loneliness, if you like, of it all, there's not a lot else around, is quite incredible. And we're told in our passage this morning that Jesus, immediately after his baptism, is sent out into this area by the Holy Spirit where he was going to spend 40 days and 40 nights and then be tempted. And one of the things they say about this area is that it is very demon-possessed. And you can see that just being there. It's, it's quite a creepy place. Quite a strange place. Imagine spending uh, time there. But before we get there, anybody ever been hangry? Is that something you get? Yeah, a few hands up. Hangry. So, um, Snickers, they come out with this commercial every now and then where they take chocolate bars and put different words on it of how we might be feeling. And hangry is quite a new word. There wasn't the word hangry when I was young because I was hangry all the time. But I was just being naughty and sent to bed. But hangry sometimes, when you're just not eating enough, it can make you snippy, impatient, grouchy, spacey, I don't know what that is, uh, rebellious, you know, all these different things. And you imagine, here's Jesus. He's been without food for 40 days. If I was in that position, boy oh boy, I would be hangry to uh, the extreme. So Jesus, he's moved, and see the top arrow there, he's moved from being baptized by John at the River Jordan, and he's just moved slightly west to the Judean desert. That's the picture that I showed you there. And that's where he spends uh, this time. Imagine he's moved from being at the River Jordan, those nice, cool waters in that valley area, to the dry barrenness of the desert. He's moved from those crowds of people that had all gathered to meet with John the Baptist, to being by himself, in solitude, in silence. He's gone from the Holy Spirit resting on him, like a dove, and the voice from heaven saying, this is my son, in whom I am well pleased, my son I love, to being sent out, driven out by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. He's gone from identifying with us in our baptism to now identifying with us again in temptation. So let's think about the purpose of these temptations and what do they mean for us? Because you see, Jesus has taken this time to prepare the ministry that lay ahead. And for some of us, we may spend some time in fasting. We may have a big decision ahead, or maybe we fast once a week and just spend some time uh, delving into scripture instead. So Jesus is spending this time fasting preparing for what lay ahead. This is the first, if you like, the assignment given to Jesus. And this isn't some glorification thing. This isn't going and healing people, drawing crowds. This is being quiet, spending time with God. And sometimes that's a picture for us as well, in preparing for things, making a big decision. We come before the Lord in quietness, focusing on his word. And so the devil, he had these 40 days to weaken Jesus, to disqualify Jesus for being my son, as God said. But God had 40 days to strengthen Jesus, to qualify him indeed as the son of God, the worthy sacrifice for our sins. 
Martin Luther has uh, three Latin words, oratio, meditatio, and tentatio. Any Latin scholars here? He says that those three words are the best teachers or the best instructors of our faith. And what do they mean? Well, you've got prayer, oratio, meditatio, focusing on scripture, meditating on scripture, and tentatio, temptation. Three ways to develop us in our faith. And as Luther put these together, they were something for pastors, and how pastors should be focusing on scripture, praying, and realizing the temptation will happen, that that builds us up in our faith. But we're all pastors, okay? The priesthood of all believers. And there are these three that we go through that help build us up in our faith. And so we're thinking this morning about focusing on the last one, tentatio, focusing on trials and temptations. And please don't think that what this is, is a pointing finger time. Oh no, I'm going through trials and temptations. Ah, go at me. He's, he's just pointing right at me. But be reminded that when we do go through challenges, the Holy Spirit lets us do that so we can grow in our faith. Jesus, as Hebrews 5.8 says, Jesus was going to grow in obedience through the things, the trials that were thrown at him. And if we're honest, we all are challenged. We all face temptations. We all face struggles. Whether it's what we eat, what we drink, what we watch, what we say, or tempted to gossip, or to, to lie even, uh, tempted by pride, <laughs> tempted to drive too fast, tempted when we get hangry. There are always going to be times when we fail, when we got it wrong. Not for Jesus, but he's the Son of God. We will fail. I will fail. But we can be reminded as we go through this, that because Jesus was able to step back, resist temptation, he is the Son of God. And he died for each one of us, so that when we do fall into sin, we know, as we've done in our confession, that we can come before the Lord God, we can receive that forgiveness, forgiveness. we can receive that hope, and that peace, and that joy. We can come to Jesus knowing that he has defeated the devil. He did indeed rise again and he sits in glory. So we can come to him knowing that there is hope even when we despair and we get it wrong. So Jesus is uh, tempted by the devil. And um, again, I said temptation is a certainty for everyone. Jesus' temptation, there's actually a Greek word, it's a uh, parazzo which means trials, testing. And for Jesus, the trials and the testing, that word is closely linked with the devil. So for Jesus, he was face on, as we've seen, with the devil. Temptations, if we read in the Bible, it's more about uh, the demons tempting us. Jesus was going to defeat the devil. And James, James 1 says, when you're tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God does not tempt anyone. It's important for us to remember the Holy Spirit can't tempt us, but the Holy Spirit does lead us or let us go into places where we will be tempted. Because it's in those places that we can learn obedience. It's in those places that we can grow in our faith. It's in those places that we can rely on the Holy Spirit to give us the strength we need. It's in those places we can rely on God's word, as Jesus did, as he went through it. And especially as we're going through Lent, some of you may have given up something, some of you may have taken on something. The devil doesn't like it. And he will be trying to tempt us to say, you know what, nah, nah, it's fine, have that chocolate. Watch Netflix, do whatever, it's okay. Oh, reading your Bible, no, you haven't got time to do that even though you've set time aside. And that's why I've given you those little pocket crosses. So you keep those on you and say, you know what? No, I hold on to the cross, even when I'm tempted to stop these things. Because remember, temptation is there to build us up, to build up obedience in us. So, the first temptation, command these stones to become bread. Ha, Jesus is hungry, okay? So, 
that was, that was a good deal. And if we read through the Bible, as we had in that bit of a quiz at the beginning as well, parts of that, there are many times in the Bible when food is miraculously given. In our Bible study this morning, we were thinking about the feeding of the 5,000. Or the, the, the Israelites received manna in the desert. Elijah was fed by the ravens. And Jesus himself, after <coughs> this, is going to be fed by the angels. But Jesus, at this point, is not going to do what the devil is trying to command him to do. And he's not going to do it just for himself and of selfish pride. At the end of his time on the cross, Jesus again is tempted in that way. Ha, if you're the Son of God, come down from the cross. You don't need to stay up there. Again, Jesus could have come down from the cross, but that wouldn't have done it the way he was meant to do it. Jesus wants to submit to God's will. He wanted to go God's way on this. And so Jesus uses the Bible it's the same weapon that we've got to defeat the devil. And again, with our challenges, remember that we have God's word. When we get these, these cravings, appeal to the lust of the flesh, when we get these cravings that come in, or it might be the opposite of cravings, it might just be a craving for apathy and laziness. We have God's word. And remember that hunger that we might need. Well, Jesus has an answer for that. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. I will fill that hole in your life. I've come that you might have peace and life, and life in all its fullness. You don't need to turn to something else. Rely on me. Base your foundation on me, Jesus says. Now, what's the tallest tower you climbed up? Anybody been up um, the Willis Tower, what they used to call the Sears Tower in Chicago? Anybody been up the, uh, the New York Empire State Building? Well, this one, the one up there, the Burj Khalifa, that's in uh, Dubai. But there are a lot of, there's the one in China, there's a lot of tall towers before you get to some of the ones in America. And when you climb up these towers and you look down, doesn't it feel good? Does your stomach turn a bit? Oh man, is that what I am? And we've got a railing and we've got protective glass and we've got everything else. Well, Jesus, he's taken by the devil uh, onto the top of uh, the temple. And we don't know how tall it is, maybe 50, 150 meters. And uh, there's no safety glass, of course. There's no, no nice railing to it. And uh, the devil says to him, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. Because the psalmist says that the angels, God will send his angels to pick you up and to, to protect you. Satan was trying to tempt Jesus, force him, if you like, into this supernatural event. You know, because yeah, if Jesus threw himself down, the angels would catch him. What a spectacle that would be. You can imagine getting that out on social media, that would draw the crowds in, wouldn't it? The devil was trying to use the Bible in a sense, strangely, to try and confuse Jesus. But of course it didn't work. The devil was using a piece of, of a psalm, but he was missing the second bit, which talked about when you do it in God's will, for God's will. And testing God in this way was not Jesus' way. Philippians 4 says, And my God will supply every need that you have, every need according to his riches, in Christ Jesus. God has already provided all our needs by sending his son. And he wants us to call out to him, to rely on him, to trust in him. And this doesn't mean we can test God. God, I wish you'd do this for me. You know, why, why aren't you doing this? I prayed about it, why aren't you doing it? Or, look, I said I'd follow you. Now why aren't the blessings coming? Why aren't I getting a new house, a new job? Or, or God, if you'll allow this one thing in my life, then I'll give my whole life to you. Putting God to the test. And unfortunately, if you, if you watch on TV sometimes, you see some of these pastors who got to a point with pride, I think, where they have the big luxurious jet. They have the big church. They have a lot of people. 
And they said, look at me, God is blessing me. And God will bless you too. Just send me your credit card now. We need to be praying for protection on our pastors. You need to be praying for protection on me. Pride is a huge temptation for pastors. I thought, you know, it would be really interesting if I go out there, climb up a tall, tall tower, throw myself off, the angels come and catch me, we got it on social media. That would grow our church, right? God will grow this church. We'll grow up. Remember, we're praying for physical and spiritual financial growth. God will grow the church in His will and in His way. He wants us to trust in Him and be obedient to Him. And then the third one. The devil takes Jesus up to this tall mountain and he looks around and he can see everything. And when I was flying uh, to Arizona, we flew over parts of the Grand Canyon. And I was staggered because I walked the Grand Canyon and it's huge, you know, it's, it's a big thing. You fly over it and it just looks like flat. But you can see a vast expanse. And Jesus takes the, uh, uh, the, the devil takes Jesus up on this mountain. He can see everything. He can see everything. And the devil says, ha, all this will be yours if you'll fall down and you'll worship me. Jesus was going to be the king of the world but not the way the devil wanted him to be. The devil's way was good, because that would mean no pain, no anguish, no separation from his father. All he had to do is give Satan what Satan was longing for, all the way back to our Genesis reading, that the Son of God would fall down and worship him. But Satan's way didn't, wouldn't work. And so Jesus says to him, away with you, Satan. Go away, run away, get lost. Get out of here. In the book of James, James 4 says, Submit to God. Resist the devil. Shout at the devil is another explanation. Shout at the devil. And sometimes when we're faced with these challenges, it's okay. Shout at the devil. Read out Bible passages. Have them written down that you can read out. And we're told the devil will flee from us. And the devil left him. Because it's written, Jesus said, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Our priority in life is to worship the Lord our God and to serve only him. Put God first in our lives. Folks, we're going to face temptations uh, as we go through life. That is a given, okay? And sometimes the more we want to be obedient to God, the more the devil doesn't like it, and the more he will try and pull us away. And the devil isn't just going to try and entice us to commit sin, but he wants to distract us from going God's way. But we've got the Word of God, we've got the power of the Holy Spirit, and we've got Jesus with us always. And so as we go through this journey of what Lent, let's remember those things. Let's keep focused on God's word. Let's keep in prayer for him. And let's keep asking each morning, Lord God, please fill me with your Holy Spirit to protect me and enable me as I walk.